we're going to talk about unwholesome mental factors. This is from the 100 Dharma Shastra by Bodhisattva Vasavandu. It talks about everything in terms of 100 Dharma. Out of the 100 Dharma, 51 are mental factors. Out of the 51, there are 26 that are considered unwholesome mental factors. So these are our afflictions. In this class, we will talk about these 26 unwholesome mental factors. Hopefully, it will help us eradicate our afflictions. The 26 consists of 6 primary unwholesome mental factors and 20 secondary unwholesome mental factors. Out of the 20, it's divided up into 10 minor, 2 median, and 8 major. Let's first look at the six primary unwholesome mental factors. Number one is greed. Because we have a strong self, we are selfish. That's why we are often greedy. And that is the reason why we are in this reincarnation. In the Sutra of Eight Realization of Great Beings, it says, Excessive desire is suffering. Birth, death, and weariness in life originate from greed and desire. All our life and death and reincarnation, samsara, comes from our greed. We should let go of our greed and our selfishness. Two people riding on the ship, A gave B all his luggages, trusting his friend who would take care of his luggages. B thought, oh, I should put all my friend's luggage on the bottom and I put my luggage on top of his. That way if the ship gets wet, I will not get wet. But there was a big storm, so the captain ordered the crew member to throw excessive luggages into the ocean for weight reduction. All B's luggages were thrown out of the ship. A's luggages were still okay. So do not be selfish when you do things that are unwholesome for your own benefit. The karma will just come right back to you. Number two is anger. We are often angry for many different unpleasant situations. We can be mad at our body because of birth, aging, sickness, death. We can be mad at ourselves when we have greed, anger, ignorance and we can be mad about the environment when it's hot, it's cold, we think it's unpleasant, then we become upset. And we can be angry about people that hurt us, our competitors, even friends and families, and we can be angry about death at the end because we don't want it to happen. Moreover, we are angry about ourselves, about others, about the past, present, and future. We can be upset about everything. That's why we have to really look at how much anger we have inside of us. There are two people on a boat arguing, why did you say that to me yesterday? You tell me exactly why. Little did they know, the time they spent arguing, the boat is already sinking. The sinking boat is symbolizing reincarnation. We are in the sinking boat but we are still quibbling, arguing, and mad at each other. That's really being silly. So do not be angry about anything or anyone. Number three is ignorance. Because we think there's a real me, we do everything dependent on the self. That's the biggest ignorance. And we do not believe in karma. Doing wholesome deeds will bring good retribution and unwholesome deeds will give you unwholesome retribution. When we do not believe in karma, we will likely be worrying and fearful about everything because we don't understand karma. That's all ignorance. Number four is arrogance. Everybody is arrogant in some ways. Some are arrogant because of their education, their wealth, or their looks, we might look down upon others. That's all because of our arrogance. Number five is doubt. We have a lot of doubt about ourselves. We're doubting our ability to become a Buddha. We're doubting the teacher. We don't think the teacher has the right cultivation, so we don't believe in the teaching, and we doubt the Dharma. We don't think the Dharma can really be applied in real life. 
If we have doubt, we are constantly unsure about what to do and always confused. Number six is our wrong views. Biggest wrong view is believing this body is the real me and is separate from everyone else. That's why we have a lot of opposition with everyone else in this world. Following the primary unwholesome thoughts comes 20 unwholesome mental factors. Let's first look at the 10 minor ones. Number one is hatred. When unpleasant event happens, hatred can arise because of someone's words, because of the situation, we can explode. That's at the moment. Number two is vengeance. After the things happen, we hold grudges. We might not show our hatred right there. We repress it and we keep it inside of our heart. Number three is vexation. Because we have vengeance, we are likely to develop vexation. That's when you really want to get back to others. We want to sue others, take revenge or talk back. That's all because we have strong vexation. All these are because of anger. Number four is concealment. When we do something wrong, we are likely to cover it up because we want to have a good image of ourselves. That's why we conceal our mistakes or our bad habits and bad behavior. But when we conceal our bad deeds, negative karma will grow bigger. Number five is deceiving. We might be falsely kind. We're lying, we're pretending, trying to deceive others to get some benefit. That's all because we are not being sincere. Number six is flattering. We might flatter our boss, our superior, our parents because we want to gain some benefits. That's all being insincere. That is not a cultivator. Number seven is pride. Pride is being proud of ourselves. It's kind of like arrogance, but you have to compare with others to be arrogant. Pride, even without comparison, you're just naturally proud of yourself, thinking you're better. Even when you're poor, you can still be proud. Even if you have no education, you can still think I'm very smart. That's all because our natural pride. Eight is harmfulness. When we have vexation, we might want to cause harm onto others. We want to kill, we want to do all these things that are very violent. Nine is jealousy. Jealousy is also anger. We do not want to see others being successful because we think we should be the only one that should be successful. That's because of our selfishness. 10 is parsimony. When we are stingy, we don't want to share our wealth or the dharma because we don't want others to have it. All these are very strong vexations and afflictions. Hatred, vengeance, vexation, harmfulness, and jealousy, they are based off of anger. Concealment, deceiving, flattering are based on ignorance. Pride and parsimony, they are based on our greed. Now let's look at the two median unwholesome mental factors. One is shamelessness, two is guiltlessness. Shamelessness is when we do not want to hear about wholesome virtues and cultivation of good people. We actually dislike it. Guiltlessness is when we like all the wrongdoings, all the violence, or people are suing each other. We actually happy. That's because we are guiltless. When we are shameless and guiltless, we will do any kind of bad deeds. So all bad deeds comes from these two mental factors. Now let's look at the eight unwholesome mental factors. These are all things that are hindering our meditation. Number one is drowsiness. When we meditate, we become sleepy and drowsy. When you cannot focus, the meditation will have no result. Two is restlessness. It's the opposite of drowsiness. When we have a lot of things going on in our mind, we're actually excited. It's having a lot of wandering thoughts. It cannot keep still. It's agitated. Three is faithlessness. When we do not believe in cultivating, in changing our afflictions, 
and becoming wholesome. We do not believe we can reach Buddhahood and we do not believe we can change our bad habits. When you do not believe, you cannot succeed in any of your cultivation. For a slothfulness, being lazy in our cultivation. We do not want to meditate, we do not want to prostrate to Buddha, we do not want to chant because we are simply lazy. Five is heedlessness. It's kind of like laziness, but it's more not following the rule. We're not watching our mind, our thoughts, our words. We are just letting ourselves go wild. Six is forgetfulness. We forget to be mindful, to be mindful of our Buddha nature. We let our thoughts go wild and just follow whatever the situation is going on right now. Seven is distraction. Distracted by a lot of wandering thoughts. Our mind is chaotic and agitated. It's kind of like the restlessness, but it's more distracting. Eight is unmindfulness kind of like wrong view. We are unmindful because we don't have the right view. We might think our own opinion is right. We do not follow the good teachings and we believe in our own opinions. All these are mental factors that are hindering our meditation. As you can see, the kinds of afflictions are different in the primary, secondary, the minor, median, and major. Now let's look at them in terms of the A consciousnesses. The A consciousness, they all have a different number of unwholesome mental factors. The eighth one is a liar consciousness, the big storehouse that store all our karmic seeds. The seventh consciousness is our manas, which attached to the eighth consciousness, thinking there is a real me and a real self, it's called the manas. Then the seventh consciousness tells the sixth consciousness our mind what to think, how to think about situations that we experience in our life. Then we have the first five consciousness, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body consciousness. So these five, they work outside and the sixth consciousness is their manager. These are the eight consciousness of how our mind function. So the A consciousness all have different kinds of unwholesome mental factors. The first five consciousnesses, they only have greed, anger, and ignorance. I have a five here. Out of the six primary, they are only capable of greed, anger, and ignorance. They don't have any of the minor unwholesome mental factors. They have the two medium ones and they have the eight major ones. So three plus two plus eight together, it has 13 out of the 26. The sixth consciousness, because the mind is very powerful, it can think a lot, it's capable of all 26 unwholesome mental factors. So the one that really creates karma is really our mind consciousness. The seventh consciousness, it has four out of the six primary unwholesome mental factors. It has greed, greedy about the self. It has no anger because it's never angry about the self. It has ignorance, thinking there's a self. And it's arrogant about the self. It has no doubt. It has wrong view, wrong view about the self. Because it's only caring about the self, it only has four out of the six. It has no minor unwholesome mental factors and it has no medium ones. It only has the major ones. Four plus eight together for a total of 12. The eighth Alaya consciousness, it doesn't create karma, so it's not wholesome or unwholesome. It's a big storehouse stores everything as karmic seeds. As you can see, the minor, medium, major, secondary, unwholesome mental factors, these are not based on the severity of the affliction. They are based on the range of function in the eight consciousnesses. The minor one is called minor because it's only working in the sixth consciousness. The medium one is called medium because it's in the first five consciousness and the sixth consciousness. 
and the major one is called major because it's in the first five and the sixth consciousness and the seventh consciousness therefore its range is bigger that's why it's called major if we can understand these 26 unwholesome mental factors always be mindful of our thoughts and be able to cast them early we are able to purify our consciousness and transform deluded consciousness into wisdom that's how we change from a mundane to a buddha everyone can do this why because the eight consciousness is actually our buddha nature just wake up and purify it all the unwholesome mental factors they do not really exist it's not in us to have these unwholesome mental factors you really have to believe that you are wholesome you are good you have the buddha nature so by understanding how these unwholesome mental factor works we can truly make a change in our lives right now and be out of reincarnation and reach buddhahood it's all from be able to eradicate our unwholesome mental factors so that's the class for today thank you for listening amitabha